a reoccurring situation that I deal with, dealing with um, married uh, believers, um, being part of different prayer groups that are men prayer groups. I get to hear the heart of the men when they're crying, you know, asking for prayer and seeking different things. And it's unfortunate that, you know, that these men are good men. You know, they're not beating on their women. They're not cheating on their women. You know, they, they're, they're, they're providing, they're working, they're serving God to, to the best of their ability. But then, you know, they get put in these positions where they want to serve God with all their heart, mind, body, and soul. But <clears throat> they're married to women who are not as connected to God. Therefore, they want to um, do what they want to do. That's the best way to say it as far as this world. And it, it's a catch-22 in a way because we in the world, but we're not of the world. There needs to be a, a significant difference between the way we act, we walk, we talk, we think, we shop, we buy, we raise our children. There, there's, there should be a, a, a difference between us and the world. When we accept Jesus Christ by way of salvation, when we say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna accept the fact that Jesus Christ was born of virgin birth, lived 33 years on this earth, allowed them to crucify him, and God raised him from the dead. When we accept that fact and we say, I want to be a Christian, I want to be a believer of Jesus Christ. And then we start learning, we go through the process of being born again. And as we go through the process of being born again, what happens is we start to see things from a kingdom perspective. We no longer walk the way we used to walk. We no longer talk the way we used to talk. We don't no, no longer do stuff based off of vanity and pride in the things of this world for the love of money. Now, this is where the catch 22 is. You know, I minister and pray and pray with a lot of God-fearing men who love their wives, love their wives to life. I don't like saying to death, but to life and will do anything. But these men are torn because, you know, these women got unsaved friends and unsaved co-workers. And what did you get for Valentine's Day or what did you get for Christmas? And these are not biblically ordained holidays. These are not days that God told us to observe. And people for years and years and years and decades and generations have been saying there ain't nothing wrong with us. Yes, there is something wrong with doing that. If there wasn't anything wrong with it, God would have put it in his word. Revelations makes it clear that we don't add to or take away. The Bible makes it clear that we're supposed to come out from amongst them. We're supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be holy. We don't do what they do and the reasons why they're doing it. That's what makes us different. You're not different because you go to church. You're not different because you speak in unknown tongues. You're not different because you read your Bible. You're different because of the choices that you make in your life that people see that makes you peculiar and different. And the biggest thing that we do, that the world see us do, is how we observe and celebrate different things that we observe and celebrate. Because when we observe Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, they will ask us, what is it about? And we tell them it's about Jesus. And that's how it works. I ain't want to get that long, but it is what it is. But we, I'm going to continue to pray for people that's going through to get to.